two, Mike Chick, one, two. Mike Chick, one, two. One, two, one, two, mic check, one, two. Mic check.
right, welcome in everybody. We're gonna get started here in just one moment. Just wanted to say thank you to everybody here in the room for coming out today. And thank you for everybody joining us on the Zoom. We will first start off with some questions, I'm sorry, with opening statements from our distinguished speakers up here. And then we will go to Zoom uh, questions and questions from in the room. If you are on the Zoom and you have a question, use the raise your hand feature and we will get you called on. When you're called on, please introduce yourself and uh, the outlet that you cover. All right, and of course, I'd like to say thank you and, uh, to everybody here and welcome to everybody on the stage. We've got Chris Long, Angie Long, co-founders, co-owners, new head coach and sporting director, Black Landonowski, and general manager, Camille Ashton. Um, and as we're here to talk about the future, being led on the pitch by Black Landonowski, I'd like to introduce co-owner and founder, Angie Long, with opening statements. Good morning. We're happy to be with you this morning and very excited to be joined by the gentleman I'm about to introduce you to. We've talked many times about our goal to be the best women's football club in the world. Um, and everything that we do has that ambition in mind. For me though, it's even more exciting when the best in the world is right in your backyard and the perfect fit for the club. This is yet another step an investment towards being the best women's football club in the world. It's my pleasure to introduce to you and to welcome home the head coach of the Kansas City Current, Blackco Andonofsky. <laughs> Blackco is one of the most successful NWSL coaches in the history of the league with the hardware to back it up. He's a two-time NWSL coach of the year and two-time NWSL champion. He's one of only five coaches to have presided over 150 plus NWSL regular season matches and one of three coaches to have seven or more playoff games under his belt. Most importantly, he's a coach who knows what it means when we say that Kansas City is the soccer capital of the United States. He, like Chris and I, want to make this club the best women's football club in the world. Thank you, Angie. And at this time, Chris Long. This is another momentous day in what is the journey of the Kansas City Current, so thank you for being here. Um, you'll hear a lot of the same themes about being the best, and I, I truly believe we are in the midst of doing just that. Um, as far as comments, Vladko is one of the most accomplished elite coaches in the world. He's widely respected by players, and soccer leaders across the landscape. He has an endless work ethic, and strives to not only win, but also inspire and facilitate the development of his players. We believe he is the right choice for our organization as we work to win championships. We can't wait for him to begin his work toward our goal of being the best women's football club in the world and, and truly, we believe this is the next phase of the Kansas City Current. Thank you. And General Manager Camille Ashton. I am extremely excited to welcome Vladko to the club. As we look toward the future, we do so with the expectation of winning. Not only does Vladko understand this league, but he understands how to win in this league. And that is invaluable. His professionalism and high standards are exactly what this club needs to take us to the next level. As a former player at a time when V coached in the NWSL, I always admired the football or soccer that his teams played and look forward to partnering with him as we push this club forward. Thank you. And of course, head coach and sporting director of the Kansas City Current, Vlako Andonovsky. First, uh, thank you very much, uh, Angie, Chris. Thank you, Kami. Thank you for the warm welcome. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today for this uh, special moment for me. It is special for uh, se uh, several different reasons. First, coming back home, coming back to Kansas City, 
But even more, I'm coming, uh, more important to me is that I'm coming back to an organization that, uh, that has a clear vision of what, what this team uh, is going to look like and the, the a clear vision of the path where this team uh, needs to go. And uh, I'm excited that, uh, and humbled by the, this opportunity to be part of uh, an organization like this. And I just uh, can't wait to, to get on the field uh, and uh, start building the, the team that will make this city proud. Thank right. you. Thanks, Coach. At this time, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions, first here in the room and then on the, the Zoom. Again, if you are on the Zoom and you have a question, use the raise your hand feature and we will get you called on. So first question today goes to Daniel Sperry, Kansas City Star. Thanks, Coach. Uh, congratulations and welcome. Um, first off, just uh, I know obviously beforehand you were with the U.S. Women's National Team. Maybe what's something that, that you've learned um, in your time coaching the national team that you feel like maybe can apply now to uh, a second time coaching a club team in this league? Yeah, coaching the national team uh, was a, was a great uh, great opportunity uh, individually for me. I'm not going to go into a uh, team, but uh, selfishly, it was a great uh, growth opportunity for me. And when you're surrounded with uh, with staff that I was surrounded with, with players, uh, some of the best players uh, uh, in the world, you have no choice but to uh, but to better yourself on a daily basis and to to, to get better in every opportunity that's given to you. And uh, there is no one or two things that I can point out, but the whole opportunity, uh, the whole um, uh, tenure, four-year tenure that, that I had was a uh, was an opportunity for me to get better. And I, uh, I certainly believe that I got better. And uh, there will be moments in my new in my new job, in my new position that I will use, and uh, hopefully even do better than uh, than before. Uh, Thad Bell. I guess it's to Angie, Chris, or Tammy, whoever wants to answer it. How long have you been working on getting Blocko into this role? I mean, I will say when, when somebody that we've known as long as, as, as we've known Blacko and someone who happens to be the absolute best in the country and happens to be in your, your backyard, it, it is something that crosses your mind for, for a long time. And um, so it, I think I would say we're just really fortunate that the opportunity arose where timing-wise, the, the stars aligned to make this happen. Uh, we'll go to Vi. Hey, Blacko, welcome home. Um, I wonder if you could just sort of describe the range of emotions from the end of the World Cup to now. I, I'm sure you had some hard days and nights and then to have this happen. I just wonder if you could speak to us about how that has felt and what it's been like. Yes. Uh, anytime, uh, anytime uh, you lose a game, uh, emotionally you, you get you get hit. But uh, when you lose a big game, uh, you you get hit even more. And uh, I mean, uh, it's not it's not a secret that uh, it was tough for me, and I went through a tough time. And uh, one thing that uh, that uh, that hit me was uh, actually how much this uh, this city. The, the people in this city, the friends and my neighbors were uh, behind me and uh, supportive of me. And uh, when I started the, the, the talks with, uh, with uh, Angie and Chris, uh, I was very happy uh, about the, the vision and, uh, and the goals, and, and, uh, but also I was also happy that all, of the, uh, all, all those opportunities were in front of me in the city that uh, gave me comfort in, uh, in my hardest times. Uh, and I'm very thankful for it. And uh, I'm looking forward to repay them. Sam? Hey, Vlarko. Um, wondering, I, I assume that last job is pretty mentally, emotionally draining. Wondering if, if you would all consider taking time off and just your thought process about wanting to get right back into it. Yes, I, I was considering taking a little, a little bit time off until uh, the first conversation I had with the owners, <laughs> and uh, and walking out of there, it was uh, I, I was so excited, and uh, the only thing I was thinking was, 
when do I start? How do, how do we make this happen? And how, how, what can we do uh, so I can start as soon as possible? And uh, right now I'm getting into this job uh, refreshed and uh, driven, hungry and uh, motivated uh, to create a club that will, be, uh, that will make a mark in women's soccer, not uh, just in this country, but internationally as well. Okay, next we're gonna take a couple questions from the Zoom. First up is John Lupo from Babel. John, if you would just wanna unmute your mic. So I'll start first with uh, the familiarity uh, with, uh, with the team and familiarity with the league. Um, obviously, I've been in the league before and I'm very familiar with that. But I also understand that this league has changed uh, tremendously si since the moment I left until now. And uh, the, in the job that I was uh, previously actually allowed me to follow the league very close, to follow the players in the, in the league and uh, to, know, uh, to know a lot of details about it. So it certainly uh, helped with uh, making the decision, but I think it will furthermore help uh, into making uh, even, uh, even uh, more difficult decisions uh, going forward. Just to add on, on, you know, on Thursday last week, we had a, an incredible event in our naming rights um, uh, ceremony. And you know, through that, we had a lot of players involved. And um, Angie and I first firsthand got to hear um, some of the feedback, and it was, unequivocally, unanimously positive. People are thrilled with the decision, the choice, you know, cannot wait to get started. And uh, that spoke volumes to, to Angie and me uh, to get that unsolicited feedback uh, right away after learning. And that, I guess, was following your speaking to the players for the first time. You also asked about that. So that was on the heels of speaking to the players to um, just say, uh, to say hello. All right, next question goes to Steph Young from The Athletic. Uh, hey, Jeff. Hi, Rocco. Congratulations. Um, you just mentioned our understanding that the league has changed tremendously. You know, back in the SDPC days, you always talked about having artists and warriors, you know, and how warriors enable artists to, to be their best on the field. And these were the days of, like, Time Warner, Holly, Rick Sauer, and Amy Rodriguez. I'm just wondering, you know, everything that you talked about learning as well in the past four years, have you taken any of that and applied it to this <laughs> so I'll start with, uh, uh, with the uh, back part of the question. I mean, uh, Josie is one of the places that, uh, that I admire, and I, I, uh, I certainly go there more often than I should. But uh, yes, uh, uh, like I said in one of the, my previous answers, that uh, there will be uh, things that I learned in the, in the previous, um, previous job that uh, I will apply into, into this uh, new job. But uh, the artists and the warriors uh, is, a, is a philosophy and uh, I, I stand by it because uh, this team does have uh, artists, uh, you know, players like, uh, like the uh, like Binya or uh, uh, Michelle Cooper and, uh, and Haley Mays. I mean, these are, these are incredible players uh, that, uh, that certainly fall into the category of uh, artists. But uh, this is a city that is known that uh, that uh, hard work uh, is not negotiable. This is a city that knows that, uh, that n knows and understands what uh, what we need to get uh, we need to get the job done. That we roll up uh, our sleeves and uh, we're willing to uh, to put the work in. So uh, the goal is going to be to um, to uh, implement those uh, those two ca uh, characteristics. To those two. Uh, uh, those two, to implement the, those two moments and uh, create uh, create a team that will 
have an opportunity to play uh, to uh, to play hard, but also in the same time have flair. All right. Next, we have Todd Palmer, KSHB. Uh, hey, Rocco. Yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's not a secret that uh, I, I did have uh, offers. I did have offers from uh, NWSL. I had offers uh, from uh, MLS. Uh, it was mainly assistant coaching uh, positions in MLS and even uh, internationally from, uh, from uh, different national teams. But uh, like, I, uh, like I said, uh, the moment I talked to the ownership group here and uh, they shared their vision and, uh, and goals for this team, I, I think that uh, it was very clear to me where I want to be and uh, what I want to do in the future. All right, thanks, Todd. Up next, uh, Chad Smith from KC Soccer Journal. I mean, uh, having a sporting director a title uh, uh, on top or together with a he uh, head coaching job, it's a, it's a, it makes the things a little more complex. But uh, like, you, uh, like you said, uh, how do we divide it? I don't know if it needs to be divided. Uh, uh, in, in fact, it needs to be more collaborative. And uh, we, both, uh, we both have uh, the same vision. We both have the same goals for this club. And uh, even uh, so far uh, in the conversations and the meetings that we had, uh, it's been uh, very, uh, very good and very collaborative. Uh, I think that uh, we're going uh, to form a great bond and great partnership and uh, we're both going to push towards uh, towards uh, the the target or towards the uh, towards the goals that we have uh, uh, individually but also as a unit uh, in front of us all right great one more question from the zoom and then we'll come back to the room Sandra Herrera CBS Sports Yes, uh, I don't know uh, if uh, if you have a choice uh, once once you join this organization, uh, it, it feels like you have no choice but to be bold and to be uh, brave and uh, uh, with the decisions that you're making. I think that this uh, this ownership group has uh, showed us that in the, in the past. Uh, I remember when uh, when uh, they wanted to uh, start this team uh, a few years back, and uh, they only had a couple of months uh, before the season started and we all thought it was uh, impossible and they made it happen and then when the complex <laughs> and uh, then when the complex was built uh, we thought that that was uh, a little ambitious but uh, it happened and then the, the next the, the stadium came and uh, we were all laughing and uh, now we're going to be playing at, uh, at, a, at a stadium that is uh, specifically uh, built for this team for uh, for this city so uh, I think that uh, going forward uh, as a coach, uh, I go with the mindset that uh, I will be expected to, be, to make uh, uh, brave decisions. I will be expected to, uh, uh, to make difficult decisions and uh, face those decisions and, and challenges as well face on uh, and embrace those challenges. So that's, uh, uh, that's one thing. But another thing that I really liked in the, some of the conversations that we've had uh, when I talk about the vision and the future of this club is uh, 
how much uh, they care about uh, the, the youth development and the pathway to professional soccer. And that really excites me because uh, that will be one of my responsibilities to, uh, to create uh, that, path that pathway and help, uh, and help uh, with uh, the development of the, of the young players and, uh, and uh, help them become uh, young professionals. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to come back into the room. Justin Hornecker. Michael, congratulations and thanks. Uh, you said earlier that you're looking forward to, you know, the way that the league has involved since your time with U.S. soccer, you know, coming home to find yourself. Are you looking forward to that challenge of evolving your approach and maybe finding something different within your philosophy? Yes, uh, I think that uh, with the involvement, uh, uh, we have no no choice as uh, as coaches as team to to keep on evolving because the game itself evolves and a lot more than uh, than uh, like it used to be in the past. Uh, in the past, it used to be World Cup to a World Cup, where now the game moves so fast that it evolves uh, on I mean on a yearly basis, and we have to keep up. And uh, it's not that we just have to keep up. Uh, we we want to be ahead of them. Uh, we we want to be ahead of everyone. We want to be trendsetters. We we want to be. We want to create or build something that uh, the people will follow instead of us uh, following uh, other groups. Okay, and Dave Borcher. Hey coach, congratulations. Uh, Cami and her team have done a really good job providing you with a loaded roster, right? You have Dabinia, several other good goal scorers. The defense got bolstered throughout the season. Give us your thoughts on the roster you're taking over and do you think it's a team that's ready to compete for a championship next year? Yes, uh, I do believe that. And we saw, especially in the, in the last few games, what this team is capable of. Some of the goals that were scored and uh, some, of the, um, uh, some of the things that they, they, were, uh, they, they were able to do on the field were, were exciting. And uh, for me, as I was getting closer to uh, finalizing the deal, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was very nice to see. Uh, obviously, uh, there were things. There are things that uh, they may need to change uh, or tweak. There are things that we need to get uh, better at, and uh, we're going to have to fix that. Uh, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's on the defensive or offensive side, uh, uh, still evaluating the team as a whole first, and then uh, I will go into individual evaluation and see what would be the best thing to do uh, going forward. Okay, we'll go back to the Kansas City Star row with Daniel Vahel and Sam. This one is just kind of like you talked about this pathway to pro. I think maybe if either both you and uh, the Longs can maybe speak to this, but um, the vision of the club to create a, a, a true academy approach um, and just how many other NWSL teams are doing that and um, why that might be important to the club. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think in um, Black Convention, obviously, th the game is changing. Uh, globally and I think we really see that on the youth side too where players are getting younger and younger and what may have been the the pathway in the past to to the pro is is changing and um, we have a huge opportunity and we think a huge competitive advantage for the very long time to develop talent as as well as just find it um, and, you know, with the resources that we have from a facilities, from a leadership, from a coaching, from a philosophy perspective, um, we absolutely are focused on developing the pathway to the pro. I think how that evolves into a full-blown academy w is still to be determined, but obviously developing youth and really focusing first on our second team is the biggest priority. Um, yes, it's happening elsewhere in the league and it's most definitely happening elsewhere in the world where we're increasingly seeing players turn pro at the age of 16. And we're seeing that a lot in our league this well, this this year as well um, with 15, 16, 17 year old pros. And um, I, do, I don't think that's a, a trend that's gonna reverse. I think it's gonna accelerate. Bye. A couple questions real quick, Flacco. One, one is just, as, as we talk about all, all the resources and facilities you have now, it, it's, it's hard not to think about the resources and facilities you had with FC Casey. And I just wonder what, what you remember about that that contrasts with what this is like now and what kind of responsibility you might feel like comes with that. Yeah, so 
I mean, uh, the times from FCK say things I remember the two championships. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, they, 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 it's uh, certainly something that motivates me be, uh, to, uh, to do or bring uh, to this club because uh, with everything that, that, that is given uh, from, uh, from the logistical support, support from the ownership group, uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, everything that is, uh, that is in front of us, uh, I feel uh, uh, I feel like uh, the least that I can do is uh, work hard and uh, bring two championships to uh, to this to this group to this team as well in the next two years. <laughs> and, and the follow-up is I just I I seem to remember um, there was an interesting story to your your interview with FC Casey at the time how eager you were on that job I think you were probably just as eager on this job can you just compare the differences in your position at the time of the interviews. I, I can't remember uh, the interview that you're referring to, but uh, I know that I was uh, very eager to start uh, back then, and uh, my starting position was uh, slightly different uh, than now. But, but uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I would say that I'm maybe even more driven and eager to to start now, and uh, more motivated. Uh, I have. Uh, I have uh, no reason to, to believe that. I know how I feel. And uh, the moment I don't feel like that, it's probably time for me to retire. All right, next we'll go back to Dave. Coach, what would you tell the fans in terms of style of play and what they can expect with you at the helm? And also, if you have any early thoughts on the formation you may break camp with. Yeah, the, the, the style of play, I, I just touched on it a little bit uh, when I talked about uh, what the, the, the players uh, that uh, we have on the roster right now and uh, I said that uh, the style of play uh, very much will uh, represent uh, the city and uh, the spirit of the city and what the city stands for and uh, we know that uh, uh, the city stands for for hard work and discipline and that that will be non-negotiable but in the same time we know the flair that the city has and the uh, and uh, and uh, the progressive thinking. Uh, so with the players like uh, like the Binya and Lola Bonta and and Michelle Cooper, that that, that certainly will be in it because uh, it will be it will be crazy not to allow these players to use their creativity and uh, to um, to to help us win games. All right, a couple more questions here. Uh, and up next, Stan Bell. Whenever a team opens a new stadium, there's always pressure to come out. Uh, you know, performing well, expectations there. Is there a pressure on you with that expectation to come out and be successful right off the bat? Uh, no one has ever asked me uh, to do anything when it comes down to result. And uh, we, uh, in the conversation that I had, that, that, that is not asked for, uh, for me. But in the same time, I do put pressure on myself because I, I feel like uh, with everything that is given to, uh, to me and the staff and the players, that uh, we, we have everything, uh, everything that we need to be successful. So we should certainly are going to work hard to, to uh, make this organization proud and to make this city proud. All right, McKenzie. Welcome. Uh, first, just wanted to ask if you've been over to the stadium to take a tour and your thoughts on getting to see that and how excited you are to, to play some matches in there. Yes, uh, I had an opportunity to go to the stadium uh, several times now, <laughs> but uh, I do. I still remember the first time uh, I was in my uh, in my last job. Uh, I took a, a tour of the stadium, and it was uh, so incredible. And uh, I just remember thinking there was a little bit of jealousy at that point because I didn't uh, I didn't know if I I will ever end up uh, here uh, being part of Casey Current, uh, but. Uh, I, I was just thinking that I, I wish uh, at some point I'm able to uh, coach for this organization, co coach at this stadium, full stadium with the supporters and people that I love, people that, uh, that are supporting me and, uh, and uh, bring, bring successes to, the, uh, to this city. All right, thanks, Mackenzie. We have one more question from the Zoom and then uh, we're going to call it a day. So uh, Todd Palmer, KSHB. Uh, hey, Michael, uh, you know, you, you go back to what, 2001 when you came to join the, the Kansas City Comets here. Um, I was just wondering if you could speak to the changes you've seen in the Kansas City soccer community and the Kansas City soccer scene since your arrival in 2001. And, you know, now you've got the Women's Stadium, you've got the World Cup coming in 2026. Just, uh, are you?
Are you excited to be part of this time in Kansas City history as soccer continues to evolve and grow with that? Yes, uh, 2001. Now, that's a long time ago. I, I was hoping nobody's going to bring that up, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how much uh, uh, the soccer in Kansas City has changed in the last uh, 22, 23 years uh, I've been here. And uh, we see uh, the, the very obvious, you know, the stadiums, the complexes, uh, the, but also uh, the, the support of soccer has changed. I mean, uh, in the last game, we, we see 15,000 people uh, at, the, at the stadium. We see the support, the, the, the sporting is getting, comments. Uh, but uh, also the quality of the uh, of the uh, of soccer in Kansas City has changed. Uh, we see the the young players that are coming out and uh, they're representing our country in uh, different ages. We uh, they're they're winning championships. They're uh, together with uh, with the professional teams in the, in this town. They're putting Kansas City on the map. And uh, I'm uh, I'm happy to say that uh, I'm part of this uh, movement to 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 make uh, Kansas City the, the greatest soccer city in, uh, in the country. And uh, uh, I'm happy that I'm part of, uh, not just part of this movement individual, but together in, uh, in partnership with uh, Chris, Angie, and Cami. And uh, the fans, you as well here in, the, in this room, because uh, ultimately it's gonna take all of us. All right, thanks coach. And thank you all for joining us today. That's it for the press conference. And uh, we'll get uh, going here with the off season with the Black Land and Ofsky area. And we'll have a lot more news to come. For those of you here in the room, we'll uh, offer Blocko up for two minutes per outlet after we do a group photo right here in front. So thank you, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.